Ancient Egyptians were known for being one of the most advanced civilizations in the world. From their discoveries, their advancement in science, mathematics, technology, and even medical, all brings a lot of gratitude to our current world for their innovation. However, there are a lot of things in this flourishing time that you might not even know about, and might even freak you out. Hi, my name is Jessa, and together let's look at the top 10 disturbing events from ancient Egypt that will freak you out. Also, before we get started, I have a little riddle for you. Are you ready? Here's the riddle. They come out at night without being called and are lost in the day without being stolen. What are they? Be sure to comment below if you got the answer. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10, mummified animals. It's not a secret that ancient Egyptians mummified their dead, but they also mummified different animals alongside with them to carry through towards the afterlife. In ancient Egypt, they believed that when you pass away, your spiritual body continues into the afterlife, to a place that's very similar to the living world, however entry to this ethereal paradise was not guaranteed. For the dead must venture on and negotiate a, a dangerous underworld journey and face final judgement before they are granted access. Their hearts would be measured by the goddess Ma'at and weighed with a feather that represents truth and justice. If the heart revealed to be a bit heavier than the feather, then it would be eaten by Amut, the devourer, and your soul would be casted into darkness. Only those whose heart was considered good and worthy of the afterlife would eventually reach that paradise alongside those buried with them, including one's beloved pets. Buried with my boss, number 9. I guess even in the afterlife you don't get a day off. See, alongside with the animals that were mummified with their owners, even servants would be buried alongside with them. It's a terrifying thought, the fact that at the possible event that your boss dies, you also join in with them. That way they have someone to do house chores around the afterlife. Do you at least get an extra pay? I don't know, I guess there's no point since we're both, you know, not around anymore. This would be more common however for the pharaoh of Egypt as he didn't want to go down alone. So yes, you do get to work for the king, but at what cost? Seems to be a very consistent theme here in history. Also even wives of pharaohs or wives of regular men would also be buried with their partner since they too didn't want to linger in the afterlife alone. I mean, being alone isn't a bad thing, it's good to be by yourself for a bit, right? Number 8. Eyebrows on Fleek Ancient Egyptians love their cats. Considering cats were not only worshipped, they even have a goddess named Bastet who represented protection, pleasure, and bringer of good health, who had a body of a human and a head of a cat. Cats help reduce the spread of diseases from mice and pests, and so they would be roaming all over their homes in the neighborhood. So when a family cat passes away, the family would shave their eyebrows as a form of mourning. Cats were so beloved that if a building was burning, people would save the cats before they put out the fire. I understand completely. I am allergic to cats, but I will suffer for them. I get them. Number 7. Destroyed Pyramid of Jedefre We know Egypt are known for their glorious and most noted monuments, the Great Pyramids. On record, there are about 118 pyramids in Egypt and are noted three standing pyramids that are considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, Cheops, Khafre, and Menkara in the Giza Plateau. But there was one pyramid that was so beautiful and majestic, its destruction has left historians and scholars shocked, the Pyramid of Jedefre. If I butchered that name, I apologize in advance. The pyramid was said to be made of stone that was blacker than granite and stood just as high as the aforementioned three. The pyramid however faded in time for unknown reasons and the base was all that was what remained. The pyramid was located in Abu Rosh and some believe that Romans stole the stones about 2000 years ago. But these types of stones are unique and have not been located anywhere else. Could it be the foundation itself was just unfinished? Or maybe the Egyptians broke it down and used its component for other uses. Who knows, but still, it's pretty odd. Number 6. Egyptian Magic Ah, <sighs> gotta love that old Egyptian magic. Other cultures have their own interpretations on what magic is or what they considered is a cult. As for the ancient Egyptians, it was part of their everyday life. In fact, most of the periods associated with ancient Egyptians were accepted and very prominent. Just as long as ye harm none, do what ye will. You feel me? For many, magic was an everyday thing. It was utilized from dusk to dawn, dawn to dusk. Magic amulets were common with the god Bess, who was known to help with fertility and birth. Heka, the god of magic, had his own temples, also even known for medicine. Magic in an ancient Egyptian world helped brought communities closer together, as they all had a connection to the many gods and goddesses that helped target their needs from better agriculture to just getting rid of a bad rash. They used wax figures, books containing spells or incantations, protective athame knives, and even ivory wands to direct energy. Magic for sure was E for everyone. Number 5. The Second Wives Club if magic is real, then the women of Ramesses III's harem definitely used it the night he died. Although there is no effective proof of their involvement, they did however use magic to influence the guards to look the other way. Those involved with the murder was the pharaoh's second wife, Tai, and her son, Prince Pantawer. There was a chance they asked the women of the pharaoh's harem to conjure spells to aid them in their cause. When conspirators were discovered, Ramesses III's successor, Ramesses IV, sent those who were part of the predecessor's death a public execution if they don't do it themselves. There's still no clear report or explanation of what enticed those closest to him to allow this to happen, 
but I have a hunch. See, during my research of the king, there was a protest on labor worker rights. Yeah, the first ever protest in regarding to equal pay or first labor strike happened in Ramesses III's time. When I first mentioned Ma'at back in number 10, I mentioned she was a goddess that weighs your heart before you enter into the afterlife. But Ma'at is also a concept of universal, communal, and personal balance for which allows the world to function according to the will of the gods. Throughout most of Egyptian history, this belief serves the culture as well. And it was the king's duty to uphold Ma'at and maintain balance between the people and the gods. For Ramesses III during this new kingdom era was actually considered to be one of the last good pharaohs in the new kingdom. However, during the war against the sea people, whose nationality still remains a mystery, Ramesses III was able to defeat the invaders with great defense and fortifying strongholds along the borders. His plan worked and his militants managed to slaughter their enemies, but that still came with a devastating loss as there were many Egyptians who died than the official records care to admit. This resulted in a loss of labor on the country's farm and lack of harvest. The economy went down and so he had to do an adjustment on taxes which put more stress on the people and his militants, but somehow it worked out. Over the next 20 years, Ramesses III done his best for his people, but when the wages for the tomb builders and artisans came, they went on strike. The officials in charge of their payment were to blame and had no idea how to deal with the situation. The workers went on strike for 18 days before yelling at Ramesses III's temple, WE ARE HUNGRY! Officials gave the strikers food and hoped that would be enough, but they went on strike again for the original reason, their paycheck. They want to get paid. The strike would go on for three years before officials of Ramesses III made the final decision to make sure their paychecks would arrive on time. And it's all because of the duty of Ma'at to keep balance and harmony among the people. I feel what this story I've shared is what might have led to King Ramesses III's demise, as corruption lurks everywhere. Whoever was in King Ramesses III's court did not care for his concerns on the workers going on strike or the other many responsibilities he had as a king. And whatever it led to, led to his unfortunate end. Number 4. Close Siblings it's not uncommon in ancient times and royal families to mix bloodlines with the same conjoining family, and in doing so increases the risk of genetic mutation, and no, not like the X-Men, like actual health issues like deformities and neurological disorders. In short, a lot of the families in ancient Egypt, especially the royal families, would keep it literally in the family. A significant amount of royals would marry their own cousins, and even siblings if they ran out of cousins. And of course, it may seem extreme today, it was actually noted in some historical records that even if they stated a romantic partner as sister or brother, that was just was actually a term they use for endearment, and they might not have actually been blood related. As for common folk, it was just acceptable to marry outside of your family. Number 3. King Tut Imagine you're just young and you're told you're suddenly the ruler of a great nation. As fun as that may seem, you're also at risk of many enemies lining up to either use you or get rid of you. For King Tut, ever since his discovery in 1922, his death has been a mystery. He's had so many reasons as to why he should have not survived, contracting malaria, many genetic disabilities due to his parents being related, as well as a club foot and other genetic defects. He was always destined to die young, and when he passed away at the age of 19, there are many speculations on his death as it was shown through an x-ray that he had a fractured skull. Which which led many to believe that it for sure wasn't some kind of freak accident. Researchers shown that he had injured his knee before he had died, which entails he passed it from a possible chariot accident. But still, that's a very odd choice for someone who has so many physical deformities, especially one that didn't have any physical support in these type of specific activities. The mystery of King Tut and his end remains unsolved. Number 2. Ancient Curses If you've seen the movie The Mummy, you know that they had a lot of don't open the chest because it's cursed. Well yeah, don't open it. And number 3, when I mentioned King Tut, alongside his famous reign, he was also known for another thing. His curse. Anyone who was involved in the 1923 excavation of his tomb were met with doomed results. Although science and history in itself noted it to be unlikely it being a curse, those involved could have contracted something, as the expedition financier George Herbert died of blood poisoning two months later, as well as Howard Carter, an archaeologist, and many others as well. There were noted to be a lot of curses on the wall, but it makes sense after all of these burial grounds and extremely sacred to the people of Egypt being basically dug up. Imagine someone ransacked your great great grand family's grave. Now that's not nice, is it? Either way, the curse on the walls translates to not to take even a pebble from within the tomb outside. Be aware of forcefully removing the stone from its place. Clearly, they warned them, so I don't know why they didn't listen. Number one, the disappearance of Nefertiti. There's just something so attractive when it comes to a powerful woman. And for Queen Nefertiti, she was one of those great women, starting her legacy as a wife and a stepmother to great pharaohs, wife of Akhenaten and stepmother to King Tut. Her tomb, however, was never found. She gained notoriety as one of the most beautiful women in Egypt, as well as her ancestry can be traced to the great Metani Kingdom in northern Syria. However, it was believed that she had changed her name and moved away. Once her husband tried to establish a monotheistic system instead of a common polytheistic system, even with her death unrecorded in any shape or form in Egyptian history, leaves historians curious of her existence. Her name disappeared from history books, but it was rumored in some aspect that she might have changed her name to become a pharaoh, just to rule. 
Either way, when they discovered her statue in 1913, her legacy rose again, and so did her fame as the ethereal Nefertiti. Yet her body still remains unfound, and more of her story begs for more research. From mummified cats to disappearing royals, there were so many disturbing events, happenings in ancient Egypt. But I'm pretty sure there was more to be found. Oh yeah, remember that riddle I asked earlier? Did you write your answer in the comments? Well, I'll tell you the answer anyway. The riddle was, they come out at night without being called and are lost in the day without being stolen. What are they? The answer? Stars. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessa and be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye bye.